Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. It is September already. I'm stressed. Can you see the stress in my eyeballs? Because I can feel it. We are going to talk about what I read in the month of August. I read nine books. I read nine books and I had a lot of hits and a couple of misses. I either had five star reads or three star reads. So we're going to talk about them in no particular order. The first book I'm going to talk about is Bloom by Delilah S. Dawson. This was a five star. This is a sapphic horror novel which I have not read any sapphic horror but it's really quick really easy it's 200 pages or so like 202 if you like literary fiction this is for you I don't want to really say much about the synopsis because I like to go into stuff blind but I'll give you a little bit so we're following Ro who is down on her luck she's going through a breakup and she goes to the farmer's market and runs into someone who's selling candles and baked goods. Her name is Ash. Now, Ro takes a liking to Ash, even though she's never really been interested in a woman. And so Ash, you know, she they entertain each other. And Ash is Ash is she's she's Ash. It was really interesting because I feel like as readers, we could see what was happening before Ro really could because she was just like you know she on the rebound she just fresh out of a relationship she on the rebound and so there were things that were happening that we as readers we were like girl you might need to turn around you know what I'm saying so it was really interesting to read from that perspective Paul Tremblay blurbed this a dizzying heady feast for the discerning palate Eric LaRocca an elegantly written nightmare facts so there are a couple of people that I love Rachel Harrison blurb this every page strips with delicious dread this bite-sized tale is perfectly wicked some really good authors in my opinion that blurb this so if you're looking for something this would be a good little spooky season read I have heard people say like this was scary I don't want to sleep at night fair this I ate up so do you just have to it's sapphic horror and it is horrifying for sure I also read The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangu Mandana. This was a five star, baby, a five star. This is a cozy fantasy found family moment. I cried. I cried after finishing this book. I actually listened to it on audio and I'm the type of person that if I'm listening to something on audio or reading something on my Kindle and I'm enjoying it, it doesn't matter if I'm 5% in or 500% in, I'm going to buy the physical copy. Look. Please don't judge me. Please don't judge me. Or you can. I really don't care. This is a warm, cozy. This feels like a hug. <laughs> so a little bit about this. We are following Mika Moon, who is a witch. She posts some witchy magic stuff on social media, but tries to pose as if it's not real. Because I think that's something that this is like in society that they do. Um, she posts like magic tricks that she's claiming are not real. She gets found by someone who's like, look, you cannot fool me. I know you really be pet casting spells, okay? And I need your help. So she goes and helps this family. And I don't want to say anything more, but it is just so sweet. I love this book. I want to read this again. This is also perfect for fall. I read these books, I feel like a month too early. But this is really quick to read on audio. So if you're looking for a little cozy fantasy moment, this is it. And honestly, this book made me laugh out loud. I was laughing with reading this book. And this book does involve children and one of them children, one of them children, I wanted to, oh, see, look, God don't like ugly. I think this is part of a standalone series. So Sangu Mandana, I believe, is writing a second book in this series. I believe it keeps getting pushed back which is unfortunate because I was really ready to dive right into the second one of these books because oh my gosh this was just <sighs> this had some twists and turns that I was not expecting in a cozy fantasy but I was eating it up five stars next is another five star this is pretty girls by Karen Slaughter and Karen whatever you took or ate before writing this book keep taking it and eating it because oh my gosh for how disturbing this book was I really loved it now i didn't enjoy it but i loved it we're following two estranged sisters that had their oldest sister disappear many years ago and there was a big kind of falling out with the family obviously there's a lot of trauma um a lot of unresolved issues like there was no 
clear-cut answer on what happened to their oldest sister and there is an opportunity in the present day to revisit what happened um, some clues start coming up like stuff happens within the family and they are on a mission to discover what happened to their older sister it's YouTube want to say hi to YouTube there's Joshua Yashi, yashi. These two sisters have to work together to kind of find out what happens. It's very disturbing. So if you are queasy, if you don't have a strong stomach, this might not be the book for you. I would suggest reading your trigger warnings. And a lot of people really wanted me, after knowing how much I love this book, to read the Will Trent series by Karen Slaughter. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm reading everything this woman has ever written. It is written. Yes, that's going to happen. So this was a pretty interesting introduction. I don't know that her other stuff is as disturbing as this. Honestly, I don't mind. I've always been a true crime girly. And the most horrifying thing about this book is that this sounds like something that could really happen. And that stresses me out. This is why I don't leave my house because of this book right here. I don't leave my house because of this book. I have, will never leave my house again, as I'm not in my own house right now. I will never leave my house again after reading this book because it's so hard to be a pretty girl. <laughs> I don't even want to be pretty. I never want to be pretty anymore in the rest of my life. If you've read this book, you know why. I know I'm not really the demographic. <laughs> this is giving like white blonde girl, but it doesn't say white blonde girls. It says pretty girls. Okay, so all the pretty girls, watch your back. Karen Slaughter, I love you, even though you're, you, you seem a little demented, baby, but I love you, because I am too. Oh. Josh is doing his fantasy football draft, um, so we need to all send him some good juju. The next book that I read, this is actually the final book that I read for the month of August. This is Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry, and oh, if I could smell any book that I have ever read, it would be this one right here. I wanted to smell the lattes. I wanted to smell the cinnamon rolls, the fruit pastries. <clears throat> I wanted to smell the chocolate croissant, the chocolate croissant. Give me 14 of them right now. Oh my gosh, this book is everything that I needed. It's so cozy. Another one that's perfect for fall. I still need to read the prequel, which is Bone, book, bone Shops and Book Dust. Lord have mercy. Book Shops and Bone Dust. I'm reading it on the back because I don't, I don't know if it was plural or not. And of course, anything set in a bookshop is my tea. I will say, this is a five star. I will say... The audiobook I didn't love. I found myself wanting a female narrator, but obviously Travis Baldry, the author, narrated his own audiobook, which I love that. That is so iconic. It ended up growing on me, but I just felt like with this story, the main characters are female. So I just felt kind of like I wanted the female voice, but he did fine. I just had to grow on me a little bit. But this book is about Viv, who is kind of running from her past. She goes to a new city and needs money. She's got to work. So she wants to open up a coffee shop because coffee is something that she had discovered in another city and there's a need for it in the city that she's in now. I think it's called Thune. So she obviously needs some help. She doesn't really know anybody. She buys this really decrepit, like, meat slaughtering facility or something horse liver a liver mill or something. I don't freaking know she buys a dilapidated building and then she meets someone who can help her renovate the building she finds someone to help work the coffee shop she finds a baker she finds entertainment for the shop and it just is such a feel-good found family moment there are twists and turns and but it's, it's very stressless there's no stress with this book so it's a really quick one I read it in a day. I literally started it at night and finished it the next day by the afternoon. So super quick, I read it, I listened to it on audio while reading it physically. I immersively read most of these books, which is my new tea. That's, that's what it is. The only reason this is not six stars is because it's not scratch and sniff. I would have loved to have a little sticker on the front of this book where I could scratch it 
and then I can smell an oat milk latte. Mm. And some people said that there were recipes in the back of this book. That is not in this book. So I might have gotten the incorrect version, but I want to make them cinnamon rolls because I swear, like the immersive reading really takes everything over the edge, especially in a fantasy. It feels like you're reading a movie, like reading the captions of a movie. I don't know. It's weird to put into words. But the only thing that would make this even more immersive is being able to smell it. Now, cozy fantasy is the perfect genre for this, especially ones that are set, you know, in coffee shops. I feel like those are really giving scratch and sniff. And look, I know scratch and sniffs were around when we were kids. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a scratch and sniff cozy fantasy. Do I want a scratch and sniff dark romance? Absolutely freaking not. I don't want to smell the smell of blood. I don't, gun residue, motor oil, I don't want to smell that. But I do want to smell a cinnamon roll and a chocolate croissant, okay? And I want you to know that about me. Anyway, five stars. If you're looking for something really cozy, feel good for fall to, to read wrapped up under a blanket by a fire with a latte and a cinnamon roll. Holla at Viv over here. Next is one of my non five stars. This is And Then I Woke Up by Malcolm Devlin. I don't really know what happened in this book. It's giving post-apocalyptic. There's a plague, but is there? I don't really know. I gave it three and a half stars. It's a really quick read. I listened to it on audio and I will say I wasn't as invested as I should have been in this book. I had just finished another book that I will talk about and it was like my favorite book of the year already. I know we still have a few more months, but early candidate a pretty a pretty solid candidate for best book of the year for me so i think i was kind of in like a hangover days from that book but it was all right it was giving spooky i don't know what was really happening in this book and that's my own fault it's not the book's fault not the book's fault at all it's my own fault i do however know that this had some pretty mixed reviews on Goodreads and there's not a lot of ratings so it's hard to really say what a good consensus is but if you're looking for something short it was pretty quick to read a uh, pretty good twist I would say I think this one would be a good one all right next is Masquerade by Oo Sangoyomi and this is a historical fantasy set in Nigeria this was a five star because this female lead this FMC is a bad butt she is the bad butt of all bad butts. And I will say the ending is giving Game of Thrones. And if you've read this book and watched Game of Thrones, you might know exactly what I'm talking about. But we are following Ogodo, who is a blacksmith in her city. And blacksmiths are the weapon makers, but they're also thought of as witches, which people don't like the witches. But she runs into this man whom she thinks is a vagrant and she's very kind to this man. She treats him like any other person should be treated, you know, basic human rights. You know, we love that. Turns out this man is not a vagrant. He is a warrior king who later abducts Adodo to take her as his bride. Now she has to figure out if that's what she wants for her life because she was literally abducted by this man taken from her family taken from her job taken from her life and but now she is getting covered in jewels baby she is treated with the most respect that she has ever been treated with and people know who she is so there are some people who are not as accepting of her but look here <laughs> a dodo if I am doing fantasy football, I am picking her first. I am picking her first. I love this book. And again, I am not a fantasy girly, but I loved this book. I listened to this on audio and I read it physically for a little bit. I mostly listened on audio and the audiobook is incredible. I loved this audiobook. But this one was twisty and turny. There's some fighting, there's some ruling, there's romance, obviously. It is, oh, I love this book. It's pretty new. I think it came out this summer. So if you haven't picked this book up and you love fantasy, this is the one for you. This is the one for you. And I really like this book made me feel like I could like I just wanted to hit the closest man I could see. 
after reading this book. Like I wanted to take this book and knock out the only man that I ever really interact with because that's how good of a, that's how bad but of an FMC this lady was. Like any man in the vicinity, I just wanted to take this book and whack over the head with it. <laughs> I was wondering, <laughs> I said it so many times. We don't condone violence unless it's violence against men. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We don't get, we don't condone violence. This made me feel very empowered as a female. I loved it. I loved it. So highly recommend this one. We have the God of the Woods by Liz Moore. This is a historical mystery. And look, I know I ruffled some feathers when I talked about this on Instagram. A historic, what makes a book a historical fiction? is that the book is set at a time at least 50 years prior to the author's present time. This book was published this year, in 2024. The book is set in the mid 70s. That would make this historical. I didn't make the rules. I didn't make that definition. I just am saying what I know. And 50 years before, today was the 70s so baby you historical mm. Mm, baby historical anyway <laughs> i am throwing so many shots at this man right now <laughs> it's not your fault you just happen to be here he don't care he drafted him anyway we are following the van lars who have this big preserve and they host a summer camp a survival camp every year for young kids and the van lars daughter deborah is it deborah or barbara her name's barbara the van lars daughter barbara attends this camp and ends up going missing now the van lars are very rich very powerful this actually takes place in multiple timelines multiple povs and i think this book is so well constructed it is a slow burn she a little she a little thick she a little thick it's a slow burn, but I think this wraps up so nicely. I love this book. It takes place in August, so it's a pretty good time to read it. We are following Barbara. We're following Barbara's mom. We're following Barbara's bunkmate at camp. We're following a bunch of people. There's detectives, there's fathers. Like this family is old money rich. The, the Van Lar Preserve has been passed down through generations, so they got, they got old money and they all play. But this book is very sad. It took me through a lot of emotions of, you know, there's marriages that are interesting, a lot of family secrets, drama. It's just, it's emotion provoking. So this was a really, really fun one. And it's a mystery, which I don't read a ton of mystery. I love thrillers, which obviously involves a mystery, but this is, I think, just straight mystery. And I really love the back and forth timelines and back and forth point of views like the timelines go from the 1950s all the way through the 70s just back and forth so I know a lot of people love this on audio I would suggest if you're going to listen on audio to also follow along um physically just because I feel like the changing POVs and timelines could get a little bit hairy a little bit hairy but it's great nonetheless. This was a five star. I highly recommend and something very, very different than anything that I've ever read. And I loved it. Loved it. Lots of characters, lots and lots of characters, but they're all written so well. And the story is written so well that I just wanted to, I really wanted to figure out what happened. So yeah. Next we have Middle of the Night by Riley Sager. This was a three star I did not love this book. It was just meh. And obviously I am a big fan of The Only One Left by Riley Sager. This one is incomparable. I, I can't, it's, I don't know. I don't know if it was because it was written by the perspective of a man for the first time, but I also know my sample size is very small and I've only read The Only One Left and this one. And The Only One Left is written from a female point of view. And this one is written from a male point of view. So I just, I'm taking it into account. Okay, I'm just taking it into account. We're not judging. 
we're not judging but we're following ethan who is in his 40s and 30 years prior when he was 10 he and his best friend billy who was also his neighbor went camping in their backyard Billy disappeared in the middle of the night and we never really found out what happened to him but now again 30 years later Ethan is back in his childhood neighborhood and really really weird things are starting to happen and he's like Billy is that you is that you friend and of course there is always that hope that Billy is still out there and lots of things happened. I never knew what was going on and then by the time I figured out what was going on or the big reveal happened I didn't care. I had no more cares left to give on that day. So this one was just meh. I'm still gonna finish reading his entire catalog because the only one left just was that good to me and he has this reputation of being hit or miss which is fine. I mean not everyone's gonna love everything. Some people really did love this book. I would definitely recommend it and I will be continuing reading Riley Sager. I think I'm gonna read The House Across the Lake next or Lock Every Door because those are the two that I own physically and of course it's spooky season so we gotta get the spooks and kooks going but middle of the night Meh, didn't care. I didn't like the main male character. He was childish. This man said adorkable. He mixed up the words adorable and dork in this book. And I think that's really what pushed me over the edge mentally. That's what started the mental breakdown that I had. Adorkable should never be written in a book, especially coming out of a main male character, an MMC's mouth. Talking about a 10 year old boy that gave me the ick. He gave me the ick. He gave me the ick. Yeah, I got the ick from that. And I mean, these blurbs are good. Jason Reculak, Simone St. James, like they're iconic authors that blurb this. And Jason Reculak says that Middle of the Night is his favorite Riley Sager novel and he's read them all. So, you know, it's, it's up to you, whatever. But it was a three for me. And last, certainly not least this is the you can see it already this is what i think is going to be my favorite book of the year the reformatory by tanana reed do i was speechless for a long time after reading this book i had no idea what my thoughts were they were all over the place this is set in 1950s jim crow south in florida we are following Robbie, who is a 12 year old boy and his older sister, Gloria, who is 16, 17. They are black. Gloria is getting a little bit manhandled by this other white boy and Robbie, who is wanting to step in and protect his sister, kicks this white boy in the shin. Now, this white boy is part of a the family. The white boy is part of a family that basically owns the whole county that they're in. So the black boy Robbie gets sentenced to six months in reformatory school. And this is obviously a very racist establishment. It's ran by white people. The treatment there is horrifying. And one thing about Robbie, plot twist about Robbie, he can see ghosts and ghosts are kind of haunting the reformatory and we don't know why. So Robbie is on a mission to get up out of there and so is Gloria. So we're following Robbie's journey while in the reformatory and Gloria's journey trying to get him up out of there. Now Robbie and Gloria's parents, their mom passed away from cancer and their dad is on the run because he got wrongfully accused of assaulting a white woman and he didn't want to face, you know, he we all know what was going to happen to him if the police got him and he said i can't do that so he escapes to chicago so it's gloria as a 16 year old girl raising robbie who is 12 by herself and i have so much respect for gloria i have a very hard time believing that this story was not real i still think this story is real even though everybody told me it wasn't even tanana reeve herself I still think this is real. It is based off of real characters in a real school in Florida that has a troubling past. But the story ain't real and I just want it to be real so bad because I think that would validate all my feelings. I felt every single emotion. I was sad. I was angry. I was very angry. I was, I don't know if I was happy, but I was hopeful. So this is just a beautifully constructed story. I believe every single person should read this. 
and yes it is a horror novel paranormal horror but in my opinion the ghosts aren't the scary part <laughs> it is the treatment of this young black boy who is innocent i mean it was self-defense what he did and the fact that i mean this is set in the 50s that is 75 years ago my grandparents are older than that and it's just an interesting story of what what was going on in that time it's it was very real it was a very real thing racism segregation um hate crimes prejudice all those things are real and still are real this is something that everyone should read for sure it's a little bit of a chunker an incredibly done story incredibly done five stars if i didn't say Alrighty, these are the nine books that i read in the month of august it was a really good month i'm very excited for september i have a lot of spooky reads on my tbr my tbd because i don't have a tbr over here i would fail immediately i do have a video about that all the things that i want to read for spooky season but there are also some fantasy things i want to get to because i read three fantasy books in this month and that is probably more than i've read in the whole year prior to august so i think i'm going to sprinkle in some fantasy some mystery i'm not sure if i'm going to be in my romance bag i might save that for spring summer and yeah so if you want to see a compiled list of all the things that i want to read this fall let me know and i'm currently filming a thriller reading vlog so be prepared for that that should come out this week and that ba -dee, ba -dee, ba -dee, ba -dee, that's all folks let me know what you read in the month of august was it a great month what did we do are you happy with it did you have some good some good reads some five stars some one stars tell me all the tea and i will see you next time we do this every time i never want to leave y'all right i gotta go i gotta go read i don't want to leave but i gotta go right now all right i will see you guys in the next one i hope you have a wonderful day a wonderful night stay blessed never stressed bye